Hello and welcome. My name is Bill and I will be showing you how we can squeeze a bit more mileage out of a tank of fuel. The goal is to get 60 miles per gallon under normal highway and city driving. The car will maintain its look and ability to commute safely. I will be attempting to build a hybrid car that will use a diesel engine and an electric motor. Together, these will achieve the 60 miles per gallon. The concept has been around here for many decades, but it is not widely used. I feel that if efficient cars were more available to the general public, that you would see more hybrids and other efficient cars than you do now. The bottom line is that experts think that there is not enough money in offering those products. So until there is a large profit margin in better economical cars or a much higher fuel cost, we must wait. In the meantime, let's explore some of the possibilities. First of all, I chose the donor vehicle based on things like cost, capacity, direction of the rotation of the engine so that it matches that of the replacement engine. Then there is the engine, which is a wonderful machine, but hasn't really changed over the years much. It still has a low efficiency. Gasolines are still less efficient than diesels, mainly because diesels have a higher energy level than gasoline. It is generally cheaper, but recently has shot up over the price of gasoline. Engines are rated by horsepower, and the horsepower rating is peak horsepower, meaning what it can produce under ideal conditions at a certain RPM. When your car is at cruising speed, you are only using a fraction of the rated horsepower. Most passenger vehicles only use the peak horsepower less than a percent of the life of the vehicle. And the extra engine capacity is, in my humble opinion, a waste. Diesel engines usually cost more because they are heavier and this withstand higher compressions than gasoline engines. But they also last many more miles than gasoline engines. Diesels run at a lower RPM because of the larger mass of the internal components. They don't use spark plugs, so fuel is ignited by heat and pressure. The fuel in a diesel engine is injected into the air in the cylinder after the air is compressed. Unlike gasoline engines, where the air and fuel is mixed before it is compressed by the pistons. Many individuals don't like diesels because of their smell and their loud noise. Diesels also use glow plugs. They warm the air in the cylinder when the engine is cold, allowing the temperature to assist in starting. New innovations recently have allowed diesels to start without glow plugs. They reduce the smells and even make the engines less noisy. Later on, I would love to add turbo to my project as well, but let's just see how well things go at the beginning. Uh, with turbo, I may be able to get more power at a low cost to improve the power to weight ratio. Turbos may also improve the emissions of the engine overall. The plan is to take a new diesel engine and mate it with the existing five-speed transmission. To do this, I will need to precisely measure the transmission and engine bolt patterns and then design and have an adapter plate made. This actually can be made quite easily because it is simply a plate with holes in it. There's no relief. Although the holes must be accurately placed with proper coordinates of hole location, if that is true, it will be a success. Keep in mind, a local machine shop would be able to do this also. Let's begin with a simple drawing on my chalkboard. Here you see the new diesel engine. I have made a front engine mounting bracket, which is designed to attach the electric motor to the crankshaft. So let's bolt on the bracket. Next, I will remove the bell housing that came with the diesel engine, as I won't need that. The motor is then mounted to the front of the engine to add to the total power output through the transmission. The adapter plate, which will have to be machined to connect the engine to the transmission, is added. 
Then after the flywheel, ring gear and clutch assembly is added, the transmission can be bolted on. Okay, let's get busy. This is the donor car I have chosen to use. It is a 97 Dodge Neon two-door with a five-speed transaxle in this vehicle. There's no cruise, no power windows, uh, no power mirrors, just the basics. We need to remove the hood, place the car securely on jack stands, and remove the engine and tranny. We will start by placing the car on jack stands so we can have access to the top and bottom of the engine. As you can see, I've already got the car on car ramps. Jack up the car sufficiently. One thing that is a good idea is to always use safety glasses. Now that I have the car securely on jack stands, I will remove the hood. By removing the four bolts and the windshield washer hose and any other wires, the hood pops right off. After removing the hood, I will label all the wiring so that if I need it later, I know what goes where. All or most of the information to remove and replace items in the car can be found in an automotive service manual that can be purchased at most automotive parts stores. When you're lifting out the engine, make sure that it doesn't catch on anything. It may be easier to remove the radiator, the air conditioner, which I have removed. I've removed the alternator and all of the wiring. There's approximately 15 sensors on this engine or more. I removed them, labeled them, and whatever sensors I will be using later on, I will have access to. The new diesel engine will not have all of the sensors that this engine has. Okay, that looks good. Now it's just a simple matter of moving this out.